Making a life worth living and a retirement worth having is literally about having all the tools at our disposal to do that. Underneath the U.S. Constitution, we literally have the right to practice any religion we like as long as, for the most part, it's in the light. There are religions that are allowed other darkness, but who the heck wants to go there? I'm certainly not one interested in that. I'm more interested in the magic and light of Lord God and light. Now, <clears throat> when I talk to you, it literally is not about me. It's really about you and your faith and whether or not you have the ability to know whether or not the decisions you're making are correct or not. You see, in life, there are ways that we can check ourselves. We can check ourselves literally through prayer. We can check ourselves literally through meditation and listening for the answers from the angelic world that comes through when we literally submit all our cares and worries to Lord God, whatever you choose to, de to define as the creator of the universe and the divine architect, whatever name you totally choose to use based on your cultural heritage, your ethnic background, your race, it doesn't really matter as long as that loving creature that you're praying to, that divine creator of the universe, is in the light. Now, when we talk about the U.S. Constitution, we literally have the First Amendment that allows us freedom of religion. So no one really has the right to take our possessions that are related to our faith. No matter what they are, no matter how crazy they might seem to someone else, they are not their little right to steal them from us. They're not their little right to give opinion or render their ideas about what we practice and how we live out our faith. That is totally within our rights within the U.S. Constitution of the United States of America. That's why we love the land in which we live. We also have plenty of other rights to establish by the U.S. Constitution. Please forgive me for the itch, but in reality, we have to see that when we're out in nature, there's a lot of things that go on. We've got people walking by doing their religious practice of exercise. We've got men walking their wonderful Great Danes and having a great conversation, sharing their neighborhood with others. But literally, what we're talking about is the rights of people. The rights of people to love in America is totally something appropriate. Unfortunately, it's not totally discussed in our Constitution, and it really needs to be. There needs to be some additional amendments made that literally say that underneath our beliefs of a loving God, that we have the right to love anyone we so choose in the United States. Now think about love. Think about that word agape. Think about the concept of love, that there are many varying shades of love. There's a love of a family. There's a love of our parents. There's a love of a loved one or a lover in life. There's a love of a significant other. There's a love of friends. There's a love of colleagues. There's a love of a lot of people, and it's all different types of love. It's a likability, I suppose. It's a trustworthiness, I suppose. It's an integrity to love. So when I'm talking about, for us, the freedom to love, the freedom to practice our religion, I'm really talking about your life. I'm not talking about my life, I'm talking about your life. I'm literally saying it's up to you to decide who you're going to love, how you're going to practice that love, where you're going to safely practice that love, and how often you're going to practice that love. And I say that with a little bit of chuckle in my eye because most men are ready to practice all the time. But that's just a joke. And in truth, women might be too. But that's the reality, that we have the right to love who we choose to love. And that's all I can say on that matter. Under Lord God's keeping, he brings to us the people we should love. He brings to us people that we can love, and he brings to us people that we might love. But in truth, how do we choose which little partner is the right one for our life? How do we choose that the things that we're purchasing are not putting us into debt? And how do we literally choose the vehicles of our lives, the clothing of our lives, what we need for the future, what we might need coming forward in our life? How do we do that? How do we really figure out what we need and what we really don't need. This materialistic world in which we live in is outlandish in one way. It's high tech in foreign countries like Japan where most of their products look like light years ahead of ours here in America where it's kind of old, clunky, and not really functional. But in truth, we all have these opportunities to decide what we need and what we don't need. People are somewhat living in excess, even if they go to the inexpensive stores that we love to shop at that have discount rates or used clothing or used furniture, there's still an excess that can be brought to our home. And literally, when we bring that excess to our home because we need it, we need it, we think we need it right now in the moment, it's literally taking away from our retirement years. You see, in retirement, our world does not care for people as well as it should. Unlike Asian countries where the elderly is honored and loved and cared for not only by families but also by governments most of the time, that in truth America is not like that. Literally every cent that we purchase during our youth, every cent that we purchase during our mature professional livelihood 
time or career period is literally taking away from the money that we might need to be saving to take care of not only our health issues in old age, but all in the natural press process of the aging of the natural body, but also in terms of our provision of food, shelter, and care as we grow old. You see, yes, it's wonderful to have a significant other. It's wonderful if there's only one bread owner, be bread winner, because in reality, that person made enough money for the entire family. But when there's two breadwinners, there's a little bit more potential for having a life worth living and a retirement worth having, because one of those paychecks should be totally socked away for the old age. If it's not, then maybe we're living outside our means. What I have literally learned from going from having a home that I absolutely adored and loved in the arts and design district of an affluent community where I lived for almost 10 years, actually more, but in a particular townhouse that I loved to the utmost of being where I was with my family, my Japanese family, and our classroom and my studio and all the things that were facilitated in that little location that I absolutely adored and loved is the reality that we can lose that opportunity. When we lose loved ones, we sort of lose life a little bit. And if we don't have friends and family within our cultural set that can come around us to help us, it's really difficult. Now, the sweat beads are sort of attacking me at this moment, so forgive me for the motions that you're going to see if I leave this part in the video. But in reality, what we're really talking about is the opportunities in life. Now, how do we literally choose the products for our life? How do we literally choose the partners for our life? And how do we literally make sure, 100% sure, that the choices we're making are honoring the loving God in heaven. Now think about that. If we make choices that don't honor God, what happens to us? Usually life lessons. Usually difficult times. A lot of people might say that I did this to myself, that I created this homelessness all by myself, and that's not exactly true. I've been stolen from now in across three properties, literally. I've had all sorts of things stolen, and I've talked about that honestly and openly because it's appalling. It's utterly appalling that there is not something immediately directly in the U.S. Constitution that says you have no right to take from another human being in this land. And we need to do that. We need to make that change. We need to make that educational shift in the rearing of our children and in our educational classrooms. We need to start it in day one in kindergarten and preschool. These are your rights. Those are someone else's rights. These are the right to personhood, to paperwork, to property. And we've got to teach that over and over and over again every single year so that we reduce the theft in the world. Because theft is that gateway sin that brings in all kinds of other horrible things. But we can talk more about that later. Today's podcast is about the magic of Lord God, and I'm going to show you how I do that. I have a loving friend who literally went off to a girly event someplace, who purchased a tool, told me about it over the telephone, was sort of excited, and then I said, hey, I don't know what the heck you're talking about. Bring it to me and show it to me. When she literally did, she was kind enough to share that tool with me and it literally did an about face when I started to work it. And I've really become a master of that tool. There are very few people. I've only met one other who can literally do what I can do practically with this tool. And I just met him in the last month or so. And it was wonderful to meet someone else who had a faith sort of like mine, but not exactly. Now, what do I do? Well, I've produced something called a pendulum. A pendulum is an old-fashioned tool that they literally used to use of sorts to find wells in our community, to find water. It's called dousing. And dousing is something that uses energetic fields of the earth, perhaps, or the angelic field. And in my case, it's the angelic field. Now, you don't have to believe me, and I don't have to really care whether or not you do, because under the U.S. Constitution, I have the little right to practice any faith I want of a loving God. I believe in a loving God that is a male figure and a female figure. I've been told pretty dang clearly that there are two and that we sort of disregard mom all the time. And we need to really work on that. Mother Earth is totally around. Father God has a different role than Mother God, and we have to know that. But in the Bible, they apply God as a male, and that's okay. It just gives a, a patriarchal society a lot more power than it should. A matriarchal society actually once existed long ago, and we sort of moved away from that when the popes came into power. But I'm not going to go down a history lesson role. What I'd like to do is show you how the tool works. Now, this little tool is something that, and I'm sitting apparently in a spider web, how lovely. And spiders are about helping me to learn to communicate, and that's something that we learn from the native world. But I'll talk about that later. You see, in life, we need a tool that can help us to check whether or not the impressions we're getting in our mind are of light or of dark. Sometimes I get tested all the time when I'm driving and I'm being told, listen, you don't need your tool to drive. You can hear the Lord just perfectly fine. You can get the directions from your directional angels just fine. But sometimes they challenge me. They want me to just not give it all up completely. They want me to look and listen before I make a move. 
sometimes I'm so in tune with them, they're like, okay, go, and they're like, wait, there's a car coming, you're going to get hit, or hey, it's a red light. So I'm making fun of myself because when you submit it all, you just submit it all. And that's the truth. Now, practically, I'd like to show you how the tool works. So I'm going to stop the video, and then I'm going to share with you information about how the tool works. So this is a pendulum. And basically, if you don't want to purchase a pendulum for the 12 to 50 some dollars that they can cost, then what you can do is take out your faith necklace, whether it be a cross or whether it be a Star of David or whether it be some other medallion of sorts, and use it instead. What you do is you literally pray to God to ask him to send you some angels to help you make a decision. And literally, they do. When we talk to God, we honor and praise him. And then we seek help in a decision. I will say, please show me a yes, and please show me a no, and my pendulum will move. As a pendulum professor, I literally teach people how to use God in their life better. Making a life in this world is literally about having the opportunities in life that we need. When we're not thinking about what we're doing in relation to other people, we lose our rights. We totally don't understand what's going on. It's not true that in life we must have help from God. When we honor God with our prayers and submitting our life to Him, we gain help. When we literally are looking at heart of heart to harm someone, we literally will lose life. We will lose opportunities, we will lose our jobs, we will lose a lot of things. Some people might say that my situation is caused literally by that, but it's not. In life, we have moments of time to truly help someone to go forward in life or to bring them down in the area in which they have lost their life. Now, which do you think is honoring God? Honoring Lord God or honoring Jesus or honoring whatever principle, philosopher that you love to quote in your life and the way that you talk to people about your faith? You see, in my life, I utilize this tool to honor God. And in every moment of time, I literally use it. I literally use it for catching information when I'm talking to people. I literally use it to look for products like food to make sure it's right for my body, to make sure I'm not allergic to its contents, and to literally make sure that I'm in the best health that I can possibly be in. I've actually slimmed down and lost half my weight, I believe, in the last few years because I've totally changed the way that I approach food. If Lord God says, this is not good for you, I don't eat it. If I'm told at a restaurant that the food that I'm looking at eating is not well made today, I won't buy it. If I literally find something that I need for my professional life, like a bag, I am literally led there on the exact day that is precisely available, and I find it, and it fix, fits my professional tools precisely. There is a problem that someone keeps cutting those bags that I purchased for next to nothing at a used secondhand store, but that's not the point. The point is that I'm always thinking about how can I possibly produce a better life for myself in the most economical way. I'm saving money like crazy. I'm literally living off of some money from my father's passing, but that's my right to do, to enjoy my life, to decide where I'm going in life, and to move my life forward. Now, when I talk about my faith, sure, there's going to be mentalists, and there's going to be psychiatrists, and there's going to be all kinds of people in different worlds who think I'm not well. But I can prove it, can't I? I mean, literally, it's my life. I'm being led through the magic of the Lord, and yet it's my life. It's not theirs to tell me one thing about how I can practice my faith, and neither it is mine to tell you how to practice your faith. And that's the beauty of Lord God, that we have this loving Lord who wants us to practice three things. Love, honoring people, and peace in this world. It's not really a hard concept. So many people are off their game talking about everything else that is not their little business in this world. They have to get back to what is love in God's name. What is love? What is love literally? What does it mean to honor people? Honoring people means honoring the soul of that individual. If that soul loves in a certain way, that is that soul's right. That is the soul that God literally put in them. And how dare they say that that soul is not well? All is well with my soul is literally a song my mother sings in her musical choir for church. And it is absolutely true that when you have peace in your heart, when you have love in your life, when you feel hope in the world, then you practically are in a better place to help people. Now I'm being talked at by the birds, by the crickets, and all sorts of things around me that are sort of distracting to an ADD man, but I'm literally still reading the word of the Lord. 
You can't see it, but I'm definitely doing it, and practically I don't have to look anymore. That's how well I am with this tool as the Pendulum Professor. Now, the name the Pendulum Professor is sort of a comical thing because I have a dear friend named Claudia who told me to utilize this name a long time ago. But at that time in my life, at that moment in time, I kept getting no all the time when I would ask about using that name. She, of course, is a brilliant woman, gifted in her own right since childhood, in fact, and she literally can stand next to you and tell you just about everything there is to know about your life if she's so motivated by God to do so. And she's a fascinating woman, absolutely fascinating, had an amazing life of redemption and honor and sophistication and just unbelievable woman. And I liked her very much as a conversational partner and someone who understood the Lord better than me. She taught me that when you get up, you should thank God for being alive. That's something that no one ever said to me in any church setting. And openly, she's a very loving person. But openly, she's just an old friend, and she told me that I should be called this because she knows I'm a teacher. She knows that my soul has been brought into this world as to be an educator of sorts of a lot of things. It literally takes me a matter of seconds to take someone's presentation and totally restructure it and openly put it in a facet in a way that creates an affinity with those who are listening so that they're more likely to understand. Hopefully I've done that a little bit today, but that's not the point of this audio cast. It's literally saying, look, if you need help in choosing things in life, you can use a pendulum or your necklace to do that. And I've got several necklaces on that I could take off and literally show you. And when I'm in my boxer briefs, I might use a towel, but I've been practicing this faith a long time. And it literally leads me through green pastures, through the difficulty valleys, and I literally find all sorts of things, amazing things, through this practice of this faith. And that's my right underneath the U.S. Constitution. So if you'd like to learn more about practicing the pendulum with your faith in the Lord God of heaven and earth, then please give me a call. If you'd like a reading of your life and where you're off track, I can literally do that from just about any point in the world, but I must have your permission underneath Lord God's rules. You see, there are a lot of mentalists who might read you physically. They might read your body language. They might read your clothing, like I met a politician who was totally scoping me from head to toe, trying to figure out who I was, what I did, based on all the little details of my life, of what I was wearing on my personage. She did a pretty little good mentalist job, but she was a brilliant woman. But what I'm talking about is utilizing this tool to honor the Lord in our purchases, in our life, in our relationships, and in choosing the right people to align ourselves with, because materialism can hit us all. Seeing someone of abject professionalism or total uh, principle um, and prosperity can totally impact whether or not we do the right thing with them. You see, poverty teaches us a lot of things, but it teaches us the humility of life, the difficulties of lack of toilets, the difficulties of lack of housing, the difficulties of a lot of things, and the most important value is that we literally need next to nothing to live a life. And that's absolutely true. So in life, we have this opportunity to honor God. And when we honor God in moments of time, we literally get all the magic in the world. When we don't honor God, when we betray people's minds, when we break their hearts, when we refuse to talk to them, we dishonor Lord God, and it impacts our life. If you've gone through any valleys in life, any dark moments in life, you know that you were getting a lesson of the Lord. What was the lesson supposed to be? Was it supposed to honor people more? Was it supposed to choose a different type of man? Was it supposed to literally have something else occur in your life completely? Was it a part of God's plan for your life to have that life lesson and so that you would come out of it in a way that would honor more people in the world? And that's what a pendulum does. It literally helps you to decide, is this the right person for my show? Is this the right individual for my life? Is this the right partner to make love to? Is this person safe to go home with? Is this person right to date? Is this material that I'm about to put on my body safe for my chemistry and my cells? Is the food that I'm choosing to do in terms of veteran, sorry, <clears throat> in terms of lacking meat, and I'm struggling with English words this morning, I might go to Japanese, but that's okay. What I mean is vegetarianism. Are you literally doing the right thing for your cells? Or are you actually causing an overweight problem because your cells require something else entirely? Should you literally be drinking this beverage? Should you literally, will you literally like this food? When you invest money at a restaurant, will you get the money's worth that you planned? And openly, can you be led by this tool through a countryside, literally not knowing where you're going to end up in a little town where the police crap all over you? But that's a story for another day. I have some amazing stories of magic and mayhem with this tool, but in my life, faith means everything. Faith in Lord God has held me all this time. And in your life, what do you love? Who do you love is not anyone else's business but your own. 
but openly. What I'm talking about is the practice of a faith with a pendulum tool and what I like to call a faith thumb. I've actually made a bunch of them now after seeing them in the store and deciding what I wanted to do in life. I love to read for people. I love to tell them about the spirit world. I love to share with them stories of my life, and I openly love to tell people about reporting opportunities that they have. You see, we have a lot of mayhem in this world caused by people not literally doing the right thing, making the wrong decisions. So a faith bob helps keep you on the path to light if your love of the Lord is strong enough, if your will to submit is high enough, and openly if you're ready for the most amazing magic of your life.